Hi, I'm David Wetter, Assistant Professor of Dermatology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. Our study looked at lupus-like syndrome attributable to anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors. We identified 14 patients over an eight-year period who developed lupus-like syndrome attributable to anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors. In these patients, we uh, looked at their clinical features, their laboratory data, and their outcome. We also analyzed uh, the American College of Rheumatology lupus criteria. All 14 patients had positive antinuclear antibodies, and 10 of the 14 patients had positive anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies, which is in keeping with previous reports in the literature. In stark contrast to previous reports in the literature, the majority of our patients, 13 out of 14, had arthritis as a predominant symptom, whereas approximately 29% of the previously 92 reported cases in the literature through 2006 had arthritis as a presenting feature. In addition, cutaneous features were very rare in our patients as only 4 of 14 patients had either malar rash, discoid lesions, or photosensitivity as one of the criteria for their lupus-like syndrome in contrast to 67 percent of patients who were previously reported. Uh, several of our patients also had serositis hematologic abnormalities, oral ulcers, or other criteria for lupus in keeping with previous reports in the literature. No patients in our study experienced severe internal organ involvement from their lupus-like syndrome, such as renal or neurologic abnormalities, and this too is in keeping with previous reports. Ten of the 14 patients uh, were being treated with TNF-alpha inhibitors for Crohn's disease and the other four were being treated for rheumatoid arthritis. This was in contrast with previous reports in literature where the majority of patients were being treated for rheumatoid arthritis. All 14 of our patients uh, after identification of the lupus-like syndrome and discontinuation of the TNF-alpha inhibitor did very well and their, dise their disease resolved over a mean period of approximately three months. All patients experienced improvement after discontinuation of their TNF-alpha inhibitor. As uh, TNF-alpha inhibitors frequently induce antinuclear antibodies or anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies in patients who have been treated with these agents, we also looked at the levels of these antibodies before, during, and after treatment. Uh, we found that after tr discontinuing treatment with the TNF-alpha inhibitor, the majority of patients had either uh, normalization or a decrease in the values of their anti-nuclear antibodies and anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies. We also looked at patients who uh, were tried on an alternative anti-TNF-alpha inhibitor after they developed lupus-like syndrome. 13 of the 14 patients developed, developed lupus-like syndrome secondary to infliximab. Five of the 14 patients were tried on an alternative TNF-alpha inhibitor after development of lupus-like syndrome secondary to infliximab. Interestingly, four of these five patients were able to tolerate an alternative TNF-alpha inhibitor uh, such as adalimumab in three patients and etanercept in one patient without recurrence of lupus-like syndrome. Uh, these patients who tolerate an alternative agent uh, were able to remain on the alternative agent for prolonged periods up to 42 months. Our findings uh, relate to clinical practice in several ways. TNF-alpha inhibitors are being used in increasing numbers of patients and for numerous indications. Therefore, it is important for physicians across specialties including general internal medicine, rheumatology, dermatology, and gastrology among others to be aware of the myriad side effects that tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors can have and the ability to recognize these rare but important side effects. Our findings are important for patients in many ways. Patients are being treated with TNF-alpha inhibitors for a variety of diseases and we as their physicians need to make them aware that they may perhaps experience uh, uncommon but important side effects from th these medications. In terms of lupus-like syndrome, patients will need to be aware that if they are to experience any symptoms such as worsening arthritis or similar symptoms that this could be a manifestation of lupus-like syndrome and that they should notify 
their physician to see if this could be a rare side effect of, the, of their medication. In terms of the next steps for our study, it is important that the possibility that patients may be able to tolerate an alternative TNF-alpha inhibitor after developing lupus-like syndrome should be explored. Uh, this should be explored in larger numbers of, of patients given the small numbers of patients in our study. In addition, the majority of our patients were being treated with tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors for either Crohn's disease or rheumatoid arthritis. As these medications are also frequently used in dermatology for a variety of indications such as psoriasis, studies looking at uh, specific patients with dermatologic diseases and seeing if their manifestations of lupus-like syndrome are similar to our findings should be entertained. There are several important take-home messages from our study for general internal medicine physicians. The first is that autoantibody production, such as anti-nuclear antibodies and anti-double-stranded DNA antibodies, are extremely common in patients treated with tumor necrosis factor alpha inhibitors. And this by itself does not mean that patients will definitely go on to develop a lupus-like syndrome. In addition, our study differed from previous reports in the literature and that our cohort of patients had cutaneous findings much less frequently than previous reports and had arthritis as an important feature in the majority of patients. Importantly, patients generally had mild disease that resolved with discontinuation of anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha therapy. None of our patients experienced a serious internal organ involvement such as neurologic or renal involvement. Very interestingly, several of our patients were able to tolerate an alternative TNF-alpha inhibitor after developing lupus-like syndrome to another agent. This also bears further exploration in future studies. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.